Hello guys, happy hour. Thursday, come on in. This is Deb with Art and Grace. And I have a cute one for you today. So we're gonna do a pretty background. I love kind of doing a surprise. So we're not doing like your typical, you know, blue sky. We're doing a pretty colorful background because the daisy I'm gonna do is gonna be mostly white. So I thought it'd be fun to play around with color. And you know, I love color, but you can certainly do yours however you like. If you wanna do a more simple um, springtime theme and just do a blue sky, you can. Hope everybody's having a great day. Let us know how it's going. So this is my first coat. I'm gonna come back over it in just a minute once that dries with a little bit. And then on the sides, we'll just kind of do it quicker. Let me show you, I'll get out a little more paint. I'm always a little timid to pour out too much because I hate wasting it, so. So we're just getting pink and yellow on here. Use any colors you love. I love deco art. I am a deco art affiliate because I asked them if I could be because that's all I want to use. I've tried everything under the sun. And as far as just a basic craft paint for things like this, I don't think it can be beat for the price. Now, if you want to go into expensive paints, that may be different, but you cannot beat this paint for the price. So I do love it. I have a 20% off code on my website. It's also pinned to the top of my page if anybody wants that. Thank you, Lisa. Appreciate you guys greeting everybody. Hey, Sherry, you use both cream coat and deco art, Barbara. Yeah, everybody kind of has their favorites, so no, nobody has to use what I use for sure. I just do like to tell y'all what I prefer and, um, you know, everybody's got what they love and that's what makes us all different and unique. You can get probably very similar outcomes with whatever paint you use but sometimes their coverage is so good, I don't even need a second coat. I do a second coat sometimes just for the colors or extra blending or things, but I usually can get a great coat. Okay, I love the colors here. So I'm going to dry this so we can go right to the next. We are gonna make this so simple that any of you can do it without any problems. And so we've got our pretty background and just brought it around to the sides. We're going to come in here and do our flower. All I really need is just a little bit of a guide. Now, if you're in the VIP group, I give you a tracer, so don't worry. You'll get the tracer. <laughs> and I clean it up. I don't ever give them a really horrible one. But I kind of have to get my bearings down on where this is going to be, how big and all that. So we kind of want a big one, right? I said this is a whimsical painting. So we're going to do a big leaf here. We're going to do a skinny leaf here. There's our little stem. We're going to put some baby's breath. So just kind of giving myself a little, you know, and then we'll have a little bit of blank space and that will give it interest if it's all kind of to one side. All right, so I'm gonna put these two away, the pink and the yellow we used for the background. I'm gonna get out some white, black, and I'm gonna do a new palette too. White, black, here we'll do the back side. So these are my little paper palettes I use. They're coated so you can use them over and over and over as many times as you want to. I will get out my um, antique gold. I, I call this mustard. It's not mustard. It's antique gold, but it's got like a lot of mustardy color in it. And then a little bit of yellow. Also need a little black. Let's think about this flower. So for the center, um, your flower is going to have some green. I looked at a picture of a daisy and it had a very greenish center. And then, of course, it was like greenish in the very middle, a little mustard and, a, and yellow. So I'm going to take this dark green and mix with some white to get it a different and some yellow, too. I'm going to add some yellow in here, some mustardy color. Really warm it up. And that's going to oh, that's perfect. That's going to be the green for the center. 
We're going to add that gold color. I keep saying mustard, gold color, and then some yellow. So you guys watch how easy this is. So let's grab this kind of pretty green and get that right in the middle. Now don't, listen guys, trust the process. I feel like there's always somebody that's going, oh, that's awful. Look at that green. Just trust the process. Now we're tapping right into our gold and we're going to put that around the green. Okay. It's kind of blending. And now the bright yellow. We will let that dry while we do our leaves. But you're getting a really pretty center by doing this. Look at that. That's just our first coat, but it's actually really going to be good. I can already tell for our center. So now I'm going to come in and do our little leaves and we'll do the stems. For our stems, I'm going to just move over some more green and some more white, lighten it up, add a little gold again. That's a pretty good color. I wanted it darker, darker, but not that dark. I think I'll add a little more though. That's a really good kind of medium green. So let's take our little brush and just give us a stem coming up. I'll go up a little higher than is needed. So we'll have daisy petals coming, but at least we know that this will be right where it needs to be. Then we will do our baby's breath. I think for my baby's breath, I will actually lighten it up even a tad more. So I'm going to add some white on this side of it. And then kind of have this coming over here. Easy. You're letting your brush do the work. Now, I, somebody asked me, you know, um, what kind of brushes I use for details, and I gave her a link, and then somebody else came behind and said, oh, they're sold out. We were in, in the group chit-chatting. So, um, I do love these brushes, and I do think a lot of people are catching on to them because they're a really good price, but yet they work really well. So, um, they are in my oh no i'm sorry it's detail brushes not this brush it's it's this one the one i just used um these brushes that i'm fixing to use are they should still be in stock but i do have them on my amazon list if anybody needs to know okay let's grab some green i'll just use it kind of like it is mixed with what was on my brush already and come in here and get our kind of shape down for our leaf so do you guys want to see some more glass art or are you getting tired of it? I, once I close my group back, we're open this week to new members. Um, but once I close it, I won't do much on my page anymore. I do it in my group. And so you might want to see more, but you let me know if y'all are tired of it or not. So just kind of getting a pretty leaf on here. Some of the daisy leaves I looked at earlier were thin, so I'm going to add a couple of, or at least this thin one here. And then we'll just kind of add a little bit of kind of greenery around the base here. It's open uh, this whole week, so we'll close like Saturday night. Um, so yes, just I, I highly recommend if you are thinking, like if you've been looking at it or thinking for a while, oh, I'd love to be in a group like that. Um, it's a great time because next time I open, I almost raised it this time and I decided let's do one more round. Um, and it's just 20 bucks. It's so inexpensive for all that you get. 
So um, it would be a great time. So we've got a couple of leaves. We've got a little greenery look. I'm going to kind of mix up a little more as we go here and um, add a little white to it for a highlight. So we're going to get out a little more of that mustardy antique gold with our green. Going to add some white, lighten it up. See how it took up some of the gold. I'm going to add some gold back in, get that warmth, and then just kind of brush on some easy highlights. Whimsical art is so fun because you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to stress. You know, um, if you ever watch people and you think, oh, I wish I could paint like that, but I can't. It's probably because you're trying to do difficult painting, you know, and they've probably been painting for 10, 15 years or more. So try some of this whimsical, easy, fun art that allows you to be imperfect and you might, you might just decide you like it. Okay, I'm gonna take a round brush. I'm gonna take this white. We're gonna make some little piles. So got some white here and I've got some white here. I'm gonna, I know it sounds crazy, but we're gonna add some black and make a little pile of gray. It'll be a light gray, but yes, it'll be gray. Trust the process. So if you're thinking, oh, gray, gotta wait and see, wait and see. And then we're going to take this other pile with our mustard color, I call it, but it's antique gold. Actually, not that much. Let's get a light, really light, pale antique gold, like that. So now we've got our two piles. I did forget I want to add some more on top of my um, center. So let's kind of do what we did again. So we've got a little bit of the greenish color in the middle. I'm gonna go right into my antique gold and kind of pat that around it and wipe my brush off and then go into my bright yellow and pat that around it and watch kind of how imperfect we're making it, just imperfect. So we've got that base down and now we're kind of adding on with some imperfect swipes. It's gonna kind of let these colors mesh and blend together. And then we'll stop before we mix too much. So now I'm going to stop here and we will dry that. So let me dry that real quick. Oh yes, Lori. So in the group, we have a lesson every week. I go in and teach um, a painting tutorial every Tuesday at two o'clock central. That time is not going to be good for everybody. So of course there's a replay. But we did a survey, and that, you know, was about the majority. The most people could show up at that time. But there's always a replay. And then once a month, we have a special paint night where I teach at 7 p.m. on a Thursday, and we go in, into great detail over another painting. So each week is a painting that is, I guess, what I consider a little less intimidating. And then on that Thursday, once a month, we do a more detailed painting. Um, let's see. This is what we did this last month on our paint night. So it's, you know, it takes a little longer and I explain a lot of things and we go over shading and highlighting and just all the things in a detailed manner. And then we have a guest creator once a month. We give away a $20 and a $10 gift card each month to somebody who has created something I've taught. We just have a lot of content. We have about 75 plus exclusive tutorials to the group, so nobody else gets to see them besides who's in that group. And we've got probably 150 tracers in there because I make a tracer for everything I paint. So there's lots. <laughs> yes, come join us. I say try it for a month. If you don't love it, then just cancel. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start my little base for my little uh, baby's breath type flowers. They're not even a true baby's breath. I'm just going to dip the tip of this round brush in my gray and just let that tip make our little flower. 
This is just a baby's breath inspired flower here. Now, normally I wait for that to dry, but I'm gonna go right ahead and take white on the tip of my brush and come right on top and add white. So you'll see a little bit of the gray in the back. So I'm picking up this gray and we're gonna do some petals with our round brush. I'm gonna start here at the base and we're gonna not overthink it. We're gonna do quick and easy petals, right? Because this is gonna be a very non-intimidating painting. So I don't want to do anything that you guys would look at and think, oh, I couldn't do that. You know, this is easy. So we're just letting the round brush kind of fall down the canvas and then picking it up so it makes a little point there at the end. I like mine to look very organic and non-perfect. You know, you don't typically see perfect flowers. Thank you, yes, Inga, you get tracers, all the things. Um, the, the VIP group if, is really if you want to go deeper. You know, if you want to know more, if you want to know where I buy things, where do I find things, if you want to know how to cut glass, how to add glass to paintings with resin, if you want to know more, like I've got some lessons in there about brushes, which brush to use and brush strokes. And you ladies have to help me because I'm it's hard for me to think as I'm painting to talk, but we've got a nice little outline of petals. I'm gonna take the same brush. You can see it's still got gray on it and that's totally fine. I'm gonna make up a little more probably. Yeah, that's gonna need more. So let's grab some of this antique gold. Pull this antique gold over here. Pull quite a bit of white and we'll mix this up. And we're gonna do some with that. I'm going to need more white. I want it to be a pale, pale antique gold color. There we go. I am going to clean this off because I always say don't use your brush to mix. So this is what your brush will look like right out of water. Nice and clean and neat. Okay. The ferrule, this metal part, you really don't want to get the paint. You want the paint about, you know, half of your brush. So when you mix with your brush, you're getting way lots of paint up in there and to the ferrule, and that's not good for your brush. So technically, I would say don't mix with your brush. So we're loading up our little tip full of paint back and forth, back and forth. I think those that have been with me the whole time have, I've never wavered. I've told you guys what my vision is for it and it's never changed and we're getting there. I love, love that. That it is a really safe, supportive space for everybody and kind people. You don't have any drama. We don't allow any politic talk. You know, we, we, we use it as an escape from the mess of the world and, you know, a great place to come when you just need either to watch something calming or to learn something and get away for a while because art is so, so relaxing. So as you can see, I'm coming in between with these petals and just adding with this round brush. Now, typically I start at the base of my flower. So start here and come out, but you can go the other way. And you saw me doing that probably. So either way will work with this round brush. But if I start at the base, I'm going to press hard and then I start lifting up and kind of twirl my brush a little to get it into that petal shape. So see here, I'm starting to kind of twirl. Okay. Is there anybody going, oh, I can do this. I know I can. Yes, you can. So I'm taking my bright yellow, which is called cadmium yellow. And, and remember, this is going to be done in, in layers. So we're not done. I'm going to take that cadmium yellow and work it into my brush. 
and then I am going to dip just a little bit into the white and we're going to come along and tap this in. So tapping into our center with cadmium yellow and white and get some highlights going in here. Okay, just let that sit. Okay, I added just white to those little tips of the buds. Now, before anything goes any further and dries, we can just come right on top and start building on our flower. So I'm gonna take a lot of white with the yellow that's down here. Probably gonna add more white to it. So I want a very light this time, even lighter than we had. So using what's on my palette, but then adding some more white. You like the glass and resin? You know I do. So I do, what I do about that, so if you're curious how much of the lessons are glass and resin, is I will teach the painting because the majority want to paint. But there is probably half the class that wants to go on and do resin and glass. So then when I'm done with the painting, I will continue on for those who want it and do glass and resin on most of them. Not all of them, but most. Um, and that way, you know, it's one of those cafeteria type thing where if you want the glass, then you watch that lesson. If you don't, you just come and do the painting and learn that. So it can kind of be whatever you want. So I've got this nice creamy color on my brush and I'm dipping a lot of it into the white and we're gonna just let those two be on the brush and we are going to come over our petals. So I'm gonna start with this gray one here and just add white to it, leaving the, the base kind of the same or maybe just a little bit of streak to it. And then whenever you need to, you can add to your brush. I'm trying to remember to show you my palette. Sometimes I'll sneak some more white on there. We're just kind of coming between on this gray and adding that lighter color. But this is the beauty of layering. You can just really start to see your painting coming alive when you layer. You just have to be patient because you know, so many of us do want immediate gratification. And so if you get frustrated, sometimes people quit. Don't quit because it will come around. You just have to keep going. Okay, so there we've got those kind of uh, covered. I'm going to clean off my brush. I don't need to get it in water, but I'm cleaning it off, kind of starting over, and we're just going to go into the white, and we're going to brush some on top of that pale. This is the ones that we did, the antique gold and, and white. So I'm just taking this white, and we're going to kind of brush on our petals. Just brush it on. So your brush is doing the work. You're just Anybody that can hold the paintbrush can do this. You're just putting it on and brushing it on top of what you have. Yes, um, this is one I had extra resin the other day. So I grabbed this painting and just poured the resin and added glass. This is a little um, vase that I broke up I have tools and I teach all how to use the tools and everything in the group, but um, it turned out so pretty because of the shape of the glass. I hope y'all can see all the texture you get by using like pretty glass. So, and I tell them where to get it and where I got it and all the things. So if they wanna run out and get the same thing they can, or they know what to look for you know, you don't have to use the same thing, but sometimes you think, oh, I didn't even think of using that, you know. Sometimes until you see it done, you don't really think. I know I love the little, um, so I, I, one of my things is I always bring part of the design onto the side or almost always. And so I love that we added the hearts on here and brought them onto the top. That just makes me happy when I see it sitting on a shelf. Okay, let's come back here. 
while that dries and I will bring in some shading on my leaves. So we're gonna grab this dark color. I got my brush wet and now I've got this darkest color on it. And we're gonna come on the bottom side of our leaves just to add some shading. That's all we need for that. You can come in and do the uh, little veins if you want to, but I think y'all are wanting to do the glass and resin if I'm not mistaken. Well, let's keep going. We're, we don't have a whole lot left. It's going pretty quick. Now, if you wanna add a little more, um, you know, yellow or anything into your daisies, you can. I'm gonna just take my brush. Oh, I do want to, I did want to take this, grab some black and make a gray and give some of the petals a little streak of gray because as the picture that I looked at of, of a real daisy, it actually had quite a bit of gray in the one I looked at. Now, they're, I'm sure they're all different, but I, that's the one I kind of was basing on. So I'm gonna put a little gray streak in some of these, not all. And I typically like to add things like that at the base and come out because the base is usually where the darkest part would be if you have a shadow or something like that. So something like that is perfect, just a little bit. And then I just wiped it off on a paper towel. I'm not getting it wet. And then we'll come back into our white, get that on the tip and just kind of come back through, take a look where we want more white, more, uh, just, you know, one, one, more step on each petal. Just feathering it on, just on the tip, just kind of feathering it on till we like the look. Hope everybody's having a good week. We are almost to the end of it. It's gone by super fast for me. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like they just go so fast. I'm making this, this petal a little wider there. We'll bring that, I need to bring that, be sure that some of it's coming off the page here. I always make sure some, even if it's just the tips, are coming off. That's just my little style. So just letting your brush do the work, you know, where you want more white or more light. And, you know, kind of, you'll see me extend a petal here or there or bring it to a point with the tip of that brush. Okay, I like it, very whimsical. I am giving some highlights here, you see, just coming on with a little lighter color to brush in some highlights. And you can do as much or as little as you want. I'm gonna grab a small liner brush. This is the one I said earlier is sold out evidently. I'm grabbing that green. Remember how I made the choice to make our baby's breath a little bit lighter? So I'm gonna come along and add with my detail brush right along the bottom. And that is giving it that shading that we like and a little more interest to have a little darkness there. And I'm gonna take the same little detail brush and build this a little, okay, so let's look at this baby's breath. See how underneath, 
Can y'all see that? You've got all the little green. I, I think of it as like fingers holding the flower, okay? So that's what we want to just click, 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 okay? You don't have to make it hard. It's super easy. Okay, so see how we just made little fingers to hold that petal, right? Okay. I'm getting a little more of this gray, light gray on mixed up, and I'm gonna use my detail brush. Oh, Judy, you haven't? Oh my goodness. Well, you need uh, some, some, some support. You should come join us. We talked about it. And, you know, it's a, having a group, if you're not a part of a group, even if you don't want to be in mine, you know, you would really benefit from a group because you can put your stuff in there and you can say, what does this need, y'all? I don't know. Does this need something? And we'll tell you, you know, or you can send it to me, like, my group ladies send me things all the time uh, in private messages, and um, and I'm happy to give, you know, ideas or what I would do, and but they do it with each other too, and that's awesome. Okay, so there's our painting. I like to use a pit pen and just put my initials down here. Okay, I like it. I hope you guys like it. When I do resin, I've done it for long enough that I can just kind of look at it and tell about how much I need, but um, I do help with that in the group and I use Art Resin brand so it has on the website a calculator and it will tell you if you're going to do a six inch canvas like this, here's how much you need. So, um, you know, that should help you feel more comfortable if you're going to do it. And then I always get out my supplies, things like that. We've got our cups. I do have to grab a pair of gloves. I think it Everybody has to kind of find a teacher that they resonate with. I've got to fix one thing I just now saw. And if you can find, you know, even if it's not me, if you can find somebody that, that you can learn from, you'll start to really flourish. You just need to find the right style of painting and the right teacher. I'm gonna tap tap a little bit more of our mustard color right there kind of go around these edges because I do like that to be the last thing I do is be sure that I've got an uneven edge for my center here, like so. Now, let's mix some resin. So whatever I pour in one cup, I need to pour the exact same amount in the other. So it's a two part system with this resin. So if you do, you know, half an ounce of one, you need to do half an ounce of the other. And I'm pouring my resin. So now I'm gonna set that far away so that if the dog ran in or my camera fell off the stand, I would know which one I had just done by the fact that it's far away and not right up close. If you'll get in the habit of doing those kind of things, then you'll have a lot more success and less accidents because I have in the past poured two cups of one and uh, of course it did not cure. It was a big mess the next day when I checked on it. I was so 
crushed. So what I did was I poured either two resins or two hardeners, I'm not even sure what. And the next day it was just, uh, you know, just a soupy mess all over. Oh yeah, a lot of people, we are gonna add glass. Yes, we are. A lot of people are intimidated, Elizabeth. So some of you guys who were intimidated and tried it, Mary Jo comes to mind. I don't know if she is on here and there's, I'm sure others that I'm just not thinking of, but um, there have been several that were timid, you know, a little timid to try it and kind of nervous. But then now they're they're just doing it all the time. So I think again, you know, when you get enough lessons, when you're watching somebody do it over and over, it's kind of like anything. That's how you learn. If you want to learn Spanish, you're going to have to take the lessons, not just one lesson, but over and over. And with enough practice, then you're speaking Spanish. So we've got these two mixed. Let me move these aside into one larger cup and we're gonna stir gently for three minutes. I, Christy always has my time if she's here because um, that way I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to set my watch or hope that Siri actually tells me, you know, cause sometimes those things don't even work when we set them. So it just is nice to have somebody else do it for me. Oh, thank you, Mary Jo. I know I remember, you know, you'd message me and you sent me an email and this and that. And then now your, your items are beautiful and you're going to be able to sell them. You know, it's another nice thing that as you get more comfortable and you start making them and if you post them, people will ask you, do you sell that? And then, of course, it's up to you if you want to sell it. But that's a really nice bonus is at Christmas time or any time, you know, that you want to, you could list your items or not list them, but, you know, show them on Facebook. And usually that's all you have to do. And somebody will message you and say, oh, I love that. Are you selling them? So you'll see me occasionally scraping my sides of the cup, scraping the stick to get it back down in and then mixing again. Okay, I knew it was coming, Christy. We're just right on sync because look how clear it is. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. As you're stirring, you'll notice it go from a cloudy, if you're using art resin, to a clear. So now, now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna play with placement. So what we did the other day in the group was we cut glass. I've got all different kinds of, this was a vase. And as you can see, it's super pretty. It's like iridescent green and it's got little notches in it. So that's, I tried that first on my little practice project and I loved it, but I didn't love it as much as this. This is like hobnail glass. Is that what you call it? And I love this stuff. So I thought I might use these and just, I have already cut these into somewhat shapes that I might want to use. Um, so this is probably what I'll do and just place these right on top. So see, and I love a lot of people, you'll see all different kind of people do glass art and they all do it different and it's okay, whatever kind of way you want to do it. So let me show you another option. Let me grab it. I'm going to have to stand up to get it. Here's another one we did. We did this Tuesday over in the group, we did the painting. And then for anybody that wanted to, we went on and did the glass. And this is more of that glass that has all the texture. And I just love how that glass looks with the resin. But this is crushed glass and it's really fun to use. This is what is the easiest for everyone to use because you can just dump it down and cover your leaves with it. It comes in all colors and, um, and it's just really pretty. So this is really the easiest thing and what I do the most because it is so easy. You just buy it just like this. And as you see, you just dump it on. And so you can totally do that. Just trying to show you all what it would look like. Just cover as much or as little if you wanna do 
all of the green you could. I'm just going to probably do something like that. So there's one look. You can also use clear, you know, clear glass will go on anything, but I do think I want to use these. So one thing when you're cutting glass, and I, I show how to cut it in the group if you're interested, but one thing is you can cut it to, now this is curved, which is what I wanted to use for this, so it really stands out, but you can cut your glass so that, you know, it would lay flat and that would be cutting it to where you cut those curves off, obviously. So, but I love interest. And so I think I might just leave it like this. That's me too, Chris. Like, like we want it to stand out, you know? I'm gonna grab some clear and see if we wanna put that on our flower. I did grab some leaves and some little vitroglass. Um, you can get this stuff on Etsy or probably other places, but I just ordered a little bit from Etsy. So let's just kind of place those. And what I probably would need to do is, that's not bad, but I might need to, uh, I, might, I might play around with what we have here. Let's just keep going and see. Let me move this a second. But you can, these gloves are bothering me, but if I take them off, I'm just gonna have to put them back on. So kind of trying to work around them. But see, some of this will be really curvy. Let me take some more out of it and show you. So this is kind of how it comes if you haven't seen this before. And you can look at a piece and take it, like this one is extra thick. So I know I'm probably not gonna use that on this, on this project, I'd want a thinner one. So just kind of play with them to get what you want. Oh, thanks, Lori. Looking at all the different pieces, you might want a really curved or a really straight. So let's see. I think this piece is perfect for that. I think this piece, oh, look, if we move it up, that's just almost perfect. Let me see if I turn it that way. That's kind of nice too. Okay. And I'm thinking about cutting another piece for that. Let's just do that real quick. Super easy to cut. You can break it with your fingers even. It's so, if it's thin enough. So there's that little piece. You see how we can just play around, which is, for me, this is the fun part. This is what I can come in here and do and get completely lost. I just forget all time. I don't have to stress about medical issues or bills. I can just paint and create. There. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's another thing about art is you're just adding little embellishments to it. It doesn't have to line up perfect. So I'm going to just leave it like this for now and say that's good and say that's good right here. I'm going to grab my plate. That's what I'm doing, Barbara. Yep, clear in the middle. So I'm just dumping some of this clear in the middle to see if I like it first. I might think it's too much and want less, but I'm just gonna see what we think. Because there's lots of ways to do this, lots of ways you can do it. So you can dump it or you can lay it. A lot of times I lay it flat. You'll see me do that does help to have some tweezers if you start getting like this where you're wanting things to go a certain place. Tweezers or a little stick, little craft stick, toothpick, things that you can push things around. 
yeah, that clear is, I like clear on certain things. It just really adds that element of, of shine without taking away from the actual art that you created. Let's see, that's so cute. I think that is just cute as can be with the, with these. You also can find little leaves like this if you want to add those. I pulled these in case I do. I don't know. Y'all have to let me know what you think of these. These are actually like beads for jewelry that I just bought to see if I liked them and if they were good quality. And you can, like I'm using my nippers to just kind of break them down a little more to see if you need it a little tiny bit smaller. I wanted to see if it looked better without the hole, you know, because beads are gonna have a hole. So you can cut it down even more. I don't think the hole matters personally, but what do y'all think of those little ones? You like them? Just adds a little something, something. Okay, we'll leave them. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so I am going to move these now. And I, you know, I know where they're gonna go because what I like to do is make sure everything's clean on your canvas. Make sure you don't have any little dust particles or anything that's flown onto it while you're working on it. And then take my resin that I've got sitting here. Oh, Judy, yes. If you have jewelry, and listen, maybe you have jewelry from a mom or a grandma. Let me see, where is, I bet I don't even have it handy. Yes, so this is something I made last month. If you had, you know, our grandmothers used to have pearls, not real pearls, but just the fake pearls and things. If you had some of that, you could make something so meaningful using their jewelry. So it's a great way to use something of your mom's or aunt's or whoever. Or if you find some at an estate sale or whatever, garage sale. So I'm pouring my resin on and I'm going to spread it around. Now, if you want to learn all the things, I do go into detail in my group and I have tutorials on everything. So um, I prefer for myself to just do the top like I'm doing here, which is called doming your resin. But some people will put this on like a silicone mat or plastic trash bag or whatever, and they'll put it up on blocks and they will just pour the resin all over this thing to where it rolls off the edges and all that. But if you do that, you've got to tape the bottom really well so that your resin doesn't stick and make, you know, big resin droplets on the bottom. And I don't want to do that. So I like just doing it on the top and then I seal the edges with a different type of sealer that's really nice and shiny, but it's just not resin. And so that has worked really well for me and that's my way of doing it. But you know, like I said, there's lots of different ways of doing it, none of them are wrong. So whatever way you end up liking the best is what you should do. I did too, Judy. I used to not just dabble, I used to sell it. I made a lot of well, I made all of my own jewelry up until pretty recently. Um, I started wearing these, but before that, anything that I wore was my own and I used to sell it. Kind of started selling it at work. Like people would just ask me, I want some of those. Where do you get those? Do you make those? You know, and, and that's how it started. And then I think those of us who do art, have always done everything. It's like we craft and we, we do art. We have tried sewing. We've done all of it usually. Oh, I loved it. I still do. Um, occasionally some, I made some jewelry. I taught everybody how to do pendants with resin and that is on my YouTube channel. So you can go see that if you want. It's really fun. And I did one in memory of my mom. So I used her picture in a little setting and then used resin to seal it. And it's got a nice big tassel on the bottom. 
and I love wearing it. It just, you know, makes you think of the person. It's like when you wear a charm or a, not a charm, a locket, you know, it just makes you think of that person all day and people will ask about it. So then you answer them. Okay. So we've got our resin all on the top. I'm going to take my butane torch and pop bubbles. You're a beater, 37 years. That is so cool, Lori. I'd love to see your stuff. So just running a pass over the top to pop the bubbles. You can kind of turn it in the light, take your toothpick and grab. If you see a little speck in it, you can grab that with your toothpick. Sometimes what I think is a speck is really just paint. Um, but if you see something, might as well grab it with your toothpick. And let me tell you, no matter how much I vacuum, I still find little things, you know, that float in from the air. So you do have to babysit it a little. So now we can place our items back. So I'm going to start with these because these were hard to get situated how I wanted them. So I'm going to kind of lay that down and then use my little toothpick to guide it. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not worried that it's not exactly on the line. It's close enough. And I think that's good. Then we're going to put down our little leaves. And then we'll put down our little big leaves. Let's see which one's bigger. I think this one's bigger. As long as you're, you've got some of the sides of your glass, so some of your sides of your glass is touching the resin, then it will stay put. Like if only a very tiny tip and a very tiny tip were touching, then I might be a little concerned and I'd be, you know, really wanting to be sure that was good. But I've got enough of this that is touching the resin that I know it's not going to go anywhere once it cures. Okay, let's hold that up to where y'all can see good. You'll see, we're gonna put our clear on that center, but there's the all the green so far. I'm just dropping down my little clears on top of that, but I do what this is kind of an example of what I do in the group where I show you the painting and you can stop there because it's a beautiful painting. You don't have to keep going, but then those who want to can do the glass and resin if they choose. You're doing good. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, good, Elizabeth. I'm glad you do. It's just so fun and relaxing. I could do this all day and get zero work done, you know? Um, I would be happy as a camper, but. Oh, I love it. That is just perfect right there. You can go on and put glass all over the petals. It's really personal preference. So, thank you. All right. So, here's what we have. So, at this point, I will check for bubbles again. Usually I'm cleaning up my mess and then that's when after I'm done I check for any bubbles. I look around, turn it, hold it in the light and if I have any I pop them again with my butane torch and then I will set it over. I have another desk and I'll set it over there with a clear tub over it and that just protects it from any other dust flying in. What I do is set this on that desk. On a, it's got to be a level surface so get you a level at the Dollar Tree like this and be sure your desk is level or wherever you're going to keep it and cover it with something to protect it and then after 12 hours it is what's called a soft cure with this brand of resin and you can take a picture of it and hold it and everything but it's still continuing to harden. So I wouldn't touch it harshly or dig my fingernail in it because that would stay.
I still have some resin left, so I can add a little bit if I feel like it needs it anywhere. But to be honest, it's really good. It's got plenty. I was gonna just do um, a half an ounce of each and I went over just a tad bit uh, because I was thinking I might wanna do another piece after I get off the live. So I have a little bit left to do that. All right, good night, you guys. Thanks so much for being here and have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.